good afternoon uh, to every one of you. A uh, warm welcome. And I would like to introduce Ms. Elizabeth Joseph. Uh, she is the corporate nursing head at Vokai Hospitals, Mumbai. Uh, she is a nursing leader with passion for generating results through people, various innovative approaches, and through teamwork. And she has been uh, very strong in strategic planning, decision making, and change management with uh, great expertise and professional uh, practice in various environments. She has worked uh, in various capacities as chief of nursing, nurse educator, senior corporate manager, and chief of nursing. And I welcome you, Ms. Elizabeth Joseph, to give your talk now. Thank you. So good afternoon, and uh, thank you, Dr. Anuradha, for those kind words of introduction. Uh, without much delay, I would uh, get on to my topic, which is on basics of nursing audit. Now, when we talk about nursing audit, there's a lot of definitions, but I picked up some very practi practical and uh, very easily understand uh, understandable definition by Gosler uh, Wolfare, which says that nursing audit is an exercise to find out whether good nursing practices are followed. And the audit is a means by which nurses themselves can define standards from their point of view and describe the actual practice of nursing. What are the purposes of nursing audit? One, evaluating nursing care, achieving deserved and feasible quality of nursing care, a stimulant for better care and records. It focuses on care and care provided and the care provider. It contributes to nursing research. So if I have to just give a very small example between the first slide and the slide, uh, take you back to 2000, uh, 2003, when you know NABH had not started and we were working for JCI. Uh, one of the things that we had to do as a requirement for quality in nursing was to have nursing sensitive quality indicators. And uh, when I sat with my team, I said, let's look at those parameters which can define nursing. So one of the things which came to our mind was on pressure sore. And uh, many of the seniors said, no, no, we cannot have pressure sores in our hospital. It's a corporate hospital. And uh, my logic was that unless you track them, unless you monitor them, you, do, you will not even know that it exists. So this is one of the purpose that you have to evaluate your nursing care. And as a process of, or as a part of monitoring the entire or tracking the entire pressure sore uh, uh, rates in our hospital, we went through a series of events. The one was to define what a pressure sore was because we all know that there are various stages of pressure sore. Second was to put in uh, place a process for documentation because when a patient went from, from the ICU to the floor, the floor nurses would say uh, the patient had the pressure sore or the patient had skin peeling while he was in the ICU. ICU nurses would say no, the patient was perfectly okay while uh, they were here, but when he went into the floor, the patient developed uh, a skin peel. So we had to put in certain processes in place. We had to look in what was feasible and what we could define as quality of nursing. And all this started a journey of stimulating better care because we had various levels of supervision. We had, had various levels of people involved in the care. The focus was totally there. The focus was very clear that we need to have zero tolerance for pressure. So hence the care that was provided was looked into. The care providers were looked into because if there were gaps in terms of training, we were focused on making sure that the training has been done. And of course, as I said, it contributes to nursing research. Methods of nursing audit, two methods, retrospective audit and concurrent audit. To very simply put in retrospective audit is an audit which is done once a patient discharge, once a patient leaves a hospital and concurrent audit is once a patient care is still ongoing in the hospital. Now, when we talk about carrying out nursing audit, the question is, but what do we assess or what type of audit should we do in nursing? So just put together a slide to say what are the possible things that we can audit on as nurses. We could start off with any documents that the nurses are maintaining. It could be something like an initial nursing assessment because most organizations define a time frame as to when the audit has to be done. Uh, you, can, you could look at the completeness of the document. We just not look at the completeness of the document, but also the appropriateness of the document and what is it that it is leading to. So these are a few examples of what are some of the documents that can be audited in an organization. Then there are certain structural things that could be audited. It could be patient safety things. It could be anything related to uh, the structure in the nursing unit itself. 
probably the the safety devices used for the beds used for the trolleys the structure would also talk about various committees in the hospital the efficacy and the efficiency of the committees in the hospital we could do process audits now when we talking about process audits we could take up any process which is done by the nurses it could be a medication administration process it could be administration of a narcotic drug it could be doing a carrying out a safe surgical checklist or it could be just a hand off which is happening between two nurses during the end of the shift audits could also entail outcome related audits so anything related to waste segregation infection control uh, the nursing outcomes uh, cautery burns patient falls any of the outcomes outcome related uh, audits could be done and we could also look at having spot prevalence audit that is one fine day you probably the nursing head decides let me see how many of the patients in the hospital are without an id band or the patient how many patients in the hospital today has got a skin peel so when we're talking about types of audit you could pick and choose from any of this it could be a document audit it could be a structure audit process it could be an outcome audit or a prevalence audit now what is an audit cycle audit cycle comprises now various literatures will give you various processes of an audit cycle but just to simply put in this is what an audit cycle is where you identify the issues you obtain or define standards you collect data you comp compare performance with standards you implement the change and you reaudit now let me give you an example of how this has been uh, adopted for one of our projects here and that was the project was called as white time which is something that we have implemented in our hospital now how did we identify the issue we had a lot of complaints from our patients that patients are getting inadequate rest and even literatures will say that hospital where a patient is actually supposed to rest is a place where the patient actually gets disturbed a lot during our rounds during the multidisciplinary rounds in the morning many a times the patient would say that they found that the rest times were not adequate we decided to we decided to uh, look at uh, defining standards we looked at the noise levels and uh, we found that who recommendation was about 45 decibel meters of uh, noise which is uh, permissible and we also thought that let's have instead of just focusing that the patient sleeps at night let's look at having a more structured way of giving rest to our patients during the day time and we defined 2 to 4 as a quiet time for our patient there was a lot of data collection done one was questionnaires admit, uh, administered to the patient we had our decibel meter readings being done across the hospital across the shift in various units uh, there were mystery observers who observed uh, who waited back to see the people movement in the in and out of the patient's room and we some of the results were really eye opening we looked at the mis report of the patient movement basically to see that uh, during the afternoon hours when we expect that the patient should be resting what type of movement happens in the hospital sometimes the patients are being moved to the diagnostic areas or there are transfer uh, ins and transfer outs happening so we had a whole lot of data that we had collected and we looked at the and what came out from the data is that against the who recommendation of uh, of uh, about 70 uh, of about 50 decibel meter our noise levels were to to the tune of 70 decibel meter and then we put in a strategy in place to see what are the things that can be done to bring down the noise level and ensure that a patient gets adequate rest so we came up with these strategies and some of the change process there were a lot of changes that we had to do we had to start from changing the shift time because initially the shift time change happened at 2 o'clock and by the time the nurses came in did an inventory check actually uh, went to the bedside and carried out uh, their uh, handover it would be tea time and then the uh, so take the, the kitchen staff would come with tea and then a set of events would happen so we decided to relook at our shift timing we also had our uh, handoffs thoroughly planned at what stage do you enter the patient's room and what are the handoffs that needs to happen outside we sent out a circular to the entire hospital including the consultants at 2 to 4 would like is a is a quiet time for our patients as far as possible no rounding no transference from the icu unless it's an, an emergency 
but of course transfer into the icu cannot be prevented and diagnostic transfers to be avoided during that time we also emphasize on the fact that restrict, restricting movement into the patient's room had to be kept to a minimum so clearance and other things have after lunch needs to be done immediately and as i said diagnostic uh, scheduling diagnostic diagnostic procedures either before 2 or after 4 we did a re audit and then we found that there was fairly good compliance to this and during the re audit stage we also decided to move on to the next stage of uh, the project which was on quite time so this is a small example of how we could how we have used audit cycle to bring about a change uh, for the comfort of our patients so this is a small story about alice who who was on a way and alice said would you tell me uh, please said alice which way i ought to go from here the cat said that depends a good deal on where you want to get to alice said i don't much really care then the cat said then it doesn't matter which way you walk so this is very unique to audit unless you have a focus unless you have clarity as to what is it that you want to measure what is it that you want to improve if you just come do your work day in and out and go out there's really no uh, improvement or there's really no change that you can bring about hence it's important that you strategize the whole thing and hold the gains of what we have achieved it's very easy to do an audit it's very easy to do a quality improvement project the results are out and then that's the end of it but the whole challenge is to hold on to the gains very very strategically and i move on to my last slide where i would like to talk about how we try and maintain these or hold these challenges in the organization within the nursing department there is a strong governance vertical which looks at the practice which looks at quality and which looks at education so these are the three governance verticals that we have in the organization and each of them has got a role very clearly defined so while the quality council looks at identifying issues by way of data collection by way of looking at trends by way of monitoring things by way of identifying areas for improvement preparing an audit tool and actually carrying out an audit with the team members the education council will focus on the key findings of the audit and if there are some changes what are those changes that need to be done identify if there are any gaps that can be filled by way of teaching and training and the practice council on the ground of of course monitors whether there is compliance to the uh, to what education council has actually thought they also help in conducting audits and they ensure conformance to the processes there is validation of the standards and patient care policies and of course coordinating and communicating initiatives to the nursing department so there is the three verticals were talking to one another all the time and i thought that this was a very good way of ensuring whatever audits whatever projects happens in the hospital is sustainable thank you very much thank you so much uh, ms elizabeth joseph it was a very clear and uh, concise presentation uh, introduction into the nursing audits and the example which you have given uh, using an audit cycle it was really good i think all the nurses and the quality heads would have got some idea uh, how to do a quality improvement in their own hospital one important thing i would like to understand uh, how it is impacting the care of the patient because uh, the nursing audit takes care of the entire process uh, how do we ensure that at the bedside the nurse is doing the right thing and uh, because process would probably take care of the environment and uh, the practice which goes in place by the nursing team as a whole so how do we narrow it down so is there any you know evolving things in the nursing and uh, which uh, probably the nurses here can take away as a message yeah sandhya so i think a uh, voice of customer is something that stands out very strongly and um, you have your customers saying it all i mean you and i work in a corporate hospital so we know that our patients neither our patients nor our consultants means their words and are kind enough to us to tell us that well your nursing is not good so i think uh, one of the uh, things is to keep your ear and eyes open to what our customers have to say and customers i would mean is the patient as well as the consultants because they have a lot to 
tell us. And uh, what I usually do is, so we have a multidisciplinary round which takes care of the patients and uh, every single patient gets visited every day. And that is how we picked up on this topic as well, because we had our patients telling us, look, you guys don't give us time enough to rest. Uh, so this is one way that we had picked up the project. And another thing is proactively, I interact with the consultants. We look at our outcomes because a lot of data that we collect and when our outcomes are, uh, outcomes really tell you a story. Those numbers really tell you a story. And as long as you're looking at data uh, and the figures and, are try and you're trying to understand what is the story that that number is telling you, I think you have it all. Because most of the times, unfortunately, what happens is there's a lot of data collected month on month, month on month, and nobody's really looking at it. But if you try to analyze it, and if you try reading between the lines to see what that data is telling you, I think you can pick up a lot of things from there. Thank you, Thank you. Elizabeth. And uh, there's one more question. Uh, what's the difference between nursing clinical audit and nursing audit? Nursing clinical audit and nursing audit, I think, I know the experts can say, but what I understand is these are terms used interchangeably. I really don't find too much of a difference is my opinion, but the experts can comment. No, I think uh, the clinical audit and nursing audit means uh, usually people think about the audit means a document audit. Clinical audit means what activity you have done on your patient nursing care audit. Is it Elizabeth? We consider that nursing when what you have done to the patient and that you have auditing that become your nursing clinical audit. And uh, when you say, okay, just check your uh, your documents and that become your uh, nursing audit, what people call that may be a document audit. Thank you so that's much. Probably that slide, the slide which I showed on nursing audit, you know, that's a broad picture. When we talk about documents, we talk about structure, we talk about outcomes. See, outcomes clearly is a clinical audit. So I think it's it's a gamut of, it's a huge uh, area of things that we cover up when we talk about nursing audit per se. Thank you so much uh, for the in interaction. So nurses are the most important people in the hospital. We see nurses uh, right from the bedside to the governance uh, areas in the hospital now. So it's a warm welcome change.